अच्छा आज का जो टॉपिक है कि आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड द इम्पोर्ट ऑफ दिस टॉपिक बैड बैंक इज ए गुड आइडिया टू इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज क्लोनिंग कैपिटल दिस टॉपिक इज टू कॉन्सेप्ट वन इज बैड बैंक वन इज क्लोनिंग कैपिटल फर्स्ट इज बैड बैंक वट इज बैड बैंक Some time ago, this came into greater currency with the Economic Survey proposing this idea that we need to have a bad bank to deal with the problem of non-performing assets (NPAs) of the banks. But Arvind Subramanian, the Chief Economic Advisor, is not the first to propose it. in india in fact about a year ago the same proposal had come from the chairman of the sbi student state bank of india arundhati vadacharya c arundhati vadacharya c said <coughs> that with the increase in the npas which is necessary to have a separate banking system to deal with the stressed assets this brings us to the question of the npa what is an npa non performing assets this is directly related to the banks banks give loan to individuals institutions and business enterprises anyone who is unable to repay the loan how do you repay it when you take a bank loan you have to pay interest on it so what happens depending on the period if you are taking a loan for 5 years 10 years 20 years a certain interest amount is to be collected along with certain amount from the original money granted to you if you are given 10 lakh rupees and you are given at an annual interest of 10% which would mean you would have to pay at the end of the year 11 lakh so the banks work out a emi system equated monthly installments which works out two different period if it is for longer period then the emi comes down if it is for a shorter period if you have to repay the loan in 2 years obviously your emi will go up if you pay it back in 10 years your emi comes down it's a standard procedure which all banks of the country follow all banks anywhere in the world follow but question arises when somebody is unable to pay back the money you have to pay an equated monthly installment every month on a stipulated date generally it's 10th of the month 10th of the month money automatically gets deducted from a bank account which you have given to the bank but what happens when you do not have sufficient money in that bank account that means default happens you have to pay 40000 rupees as a emi but your account has only 20000 
which would mean your ECS, is, is the check that you have given bounces. So you become a defaulter. Once you become a defaulter, then the bank gives you a notice, imposes heavy penalty, and asks you to make the payment next month, make the collective payment for two months in the next installment. But what happens when somebody again fails to make the second installment payment? then that becomes a matter of concern. Then bank again sends notices. But despite all notices, it comes to a third month, again you are not able to make the payment. If you, by bank's own definition and logic, if any individual or any institution unable to discharge the duties of repayment of loan consecutively for 90 days, that is three months, then that comes under the stressed category. Stress category, then bank had different options to deal with individual situations. <coughs> if you and me have taken this loan <coughs> and defaulted in our payment, bank will serve notice. Suppose you have, got, you have bought a car with a loan. When you bought a car, the car is hypothecated to the company, to the, to the bank. So what are we? You are using the car. So the bank will send its personnel, especially mainly the bouncers, to take away the car from you until you repay the amount. If you have bought a house with the bank loan, then house ownership papers lie with the bank. And if you start defaulting, then the bank would seize the housing property and would take over and auction it to collect the amount. Because these are all tangible assets. So any average citizen, any middle class person who uses a bank loan to buy any thing, any white cloth, white goods for domestic purpose or for personal use, inevitably the, those are seized and taken. So these kind of loans do not become stressed ones. Hundreds and thousands of the people who take bank loan to buy a house or buy a car or some household goods, they invariably make the payment unless there is a tragedy in the family, somebody dies, some issue. But even that is also taken care of because in case of death, there are all these loans are linked to insurances. So back to insurance, if you die, obviously the insurance will pay the money. The bank is not a loser. You pay a certain amount of money to the insurance every time because they are covering the cost of your insurance in case of any tragic death. 
In that sense, when it comes to the NPA banks, in non-performing assets or default on loans from the middle class is absolutely minimal. Not even one percent. The real problem comes when banks deal with the loans given to the industrial houses. Because those loans are bigger. For a housing loan, you would buy, you would take a middle class person who take 50 lakhs, 60 lakhs, 70 lakhs, or uh, some one who is better paid, possibly two crore, three crore. But anyway, the, the physical assets of the building is in possession of the banks. But what happens in the businesses? When a business house asks for loan, what does it do? They are supposed to give a collateral. What is a collateral? Something you have to show in exchange. If I default in the payment, this, this would be remaining hypothecated to you, you can sell it up. As you know, many of you, if you are looking for bank loans for education or anything, the bank manager would ask, do you have what kind of property you have? Although, strictly speaking, as for the government's regulations, education loan cannot have any collateral. You cannot demand collateral for advancing education loan. But bankers, you know, to satisfy themselves that here is a person who will be able to repay the money, you take 5 lakhs, 7 lakhs, 10 lakhs, they would like to know what kind of collateral you have. Some land, you have some property, you have some other assets, some investment, some fixed deposit, you will all have to show this. But in the case of the industries, in it because industries are big concerns, they should have much bigger asset to give us collateral. But what do the industries do? Every industry, every top industry, when it starts seeking money from the bank, it always creates a new institution, completely dealing with the other institutions. The other institutions may have 50,000 crore as assets. But here is a new institution I have created for a new purpose, new special purpose way to, to invest in a new sector. Whether it's a sector cement, electricity, metals, minerals, or spectrum, anything as you like. Nobody does it from the umbrella larger organization because the entire entire assets of your institution would be affected. So they create a separate institution and say that we have a huge branding and because of the branding you give us the money. Why is it that when you and I, the average citizen goes for a loan, our properties, our, our tarts or our houses are hypothecated to the bank. But in case of business houses, it is not done. It is how it is done, it is done on the basis of trust. And how does the bank and the government justify it? Saying, when an individual is borrowing money, 
for buying a house or a car, he or she is doing it for himself or herself. But when an industrialist is seeking money to invest, then he is doing it for the nation. Because if he makes an investment, big enterprise he creates, he would be able to generate a lot of wealth. He would be able to employ a lot of people. He would be in a position to pay a lot of taxes to the government. So the country, the people, the economy, everyone would benefit. So that's why we need to give them loans for the larger national interest. And that's how they take the money without any poor at all. And then what happens? They take a money, you, you are given 5,000 crore. One industrial house gets a 5,000 crore. And then invests in whatever purpose. Certainly it says that the prices have gone up very high. The raw materials have gone up. Our estimations have proved wrong. And that is the reason why we would need another 5,000 crore as an investment. So what happens? Mind you, this 5,000 crores do not come from one source. Because we have 24 public sector banks, so 5,000 crore to one person would appear a little too big and would be visible. So Everywhere applies for 200 crore, 300 crore, 500 crore, 700 crore, depending the bigger is the bigger the amount and smaller bank, the smaller amount. So a consortium comes up of all the banks which are, because they say, we have already invested 5,000 crore in this. If we do not give additional money, then this fellow says, my project will not take off, I will not be able to pay back your money. So it's a blackmail. It's a blackmail. You pay, better pay, otherwise forget about your 5,000 crore that you have paid because I have no money to pay back. I am not going to produce anything to pay back. So in that case, this, all these banks say, no, we we'll have to get back our money, so we need to pay that 5,000 crore, another additional 5,000 And this is a process in which these industrial houses proceed. And when they proceed, they always work in tandem. The people with bigger resources, bigger money to bribe the officials in the bank and in the government are able to get more amount of money and those who have less clout or less money they get less amount of money but nevertheless depending on your money on your assets you are able to draw huge amount of money from these structures. And what happens over a period of time, even after 10,000 rupee has been already invested, you suddenly find that the production is not taking off. There are other issues. Then the industries come up to the banks and say, please restructure our 
loans. How do you restructure your loans? You may stand up. Now you are sitting there. Stand up. Just stand up. Just stand up. Stand up. Please, the teacher at the back, please take a look at this. Keep standing up. And that's the reason. That's the that's the reason why. What happens is the there is a concept of blackmail that gets into the system. And how? Either you pay this money, pay me more money. If you do not pay me more money, then you lose your. Money that you have already paid. It's a no-win situation for the banks, and that's the reason why. And especially if you look at, you must have seen several examples where some of the bigger houses who have been bought by syndicate bank chairman was bought. A couple of years ago, by the CBI, because someone in someone someone complained, collecting a bribe of 1.5 crore to advance a loan of 250 crore. So the it's 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 not simply the simply the bank officials. It's also the collaboration and complicity of the ministry as well. Only a couple of days ago, you saw. Now, Vijay Malaya is the bad word. What had happened? Some of the emails showing Vijay Malay writing to his CFO. Here is my here is the Joint Secretary Banking Amitabh Verma. I have placed his palms very well. Don't worry. He brought, I think, some. United Bank of India or some bank official, chairman, to me, and he has already agreed that tomorrow he will sanction 250 crore. And that is how the entire operation happens. Vijay Mala is actually a small fry. We have made a big issue about Vijay Mala, but he is actually he has borrowed from the public sector banks only nine thousand crore. We have. At least more than ten institutions, ten industrial enterprises, which have borrowed more than forty thousand crore and have refused to repay the money back to the banks. And there are about fifty institutions, fifty industrial enterprises, which have. Taken not less than twenty thousand crore and refused to pay the payment, and they are making money. They are all of them throwing lavish parties. They have lavish different other set of have different hospitality sector. In the they have huge. Look at the JP group itself. JP Group, which is defaulted on more than fifty thousand crore of the money, and 
but now look at promoting its own hospital and spend 5,000 crore in the hospital and have five big hotels out of which another turnover is more than 500 crore. So having all of them are running very well. This is an asset. This is the stressed asset. 50,000 crore. You re you restructure my loan, then only I'll be able to pay. Otherwise, I'm not. He is busy with the other inst other institutions that he has built, which are making huge profits. And because with the complicity of the government, they have made a law, company law, whereby they say these companies are all separate. And so, in order to collect money from this bank, this venture, you cannot seize the property of the other venture. To collect the money that JP has defaulted, for example, they cannot take over his hotels, his spas, or his fertilizer companies, and his other businesses or take over the own expressway which he owns and from which he makes a hundred crore rupee every year. They cannot take it away because they are all, this is all in connivance with the government. Because the government, the, these business houses have joined hands with the government to make a law so that they are always safe. That is the essence of Tony capitalism. The other term that we know. So what is the Tony capitalism? Tony capitalism is that which is the government, the powers that be, the political leaders, the bureaucrats, the regulatory institutions, the banks are in cowards with all these business houses to ensure that they can squander the public money and they, nothing would happen to them. Everyone would be protected. What is the extent of money that has been wasted? Economic surveys own stipulation says India's banking sector has advanced about 74 lakh crore rupees. Out of which, about 70% advances are by the government sectors, government PSPs, which amounts to almost 50. Lakh crore. 50 lakh crore is the amount which is being advanced by the public sector banks and by the own admission of the economic survey itself. 20% of these advances, at least conservative estimate, 20% of these advances are stressed, are not recoverable, which would mean 10,000 crore rupees. You people don't have to write anything. 10,000 crore ruby assets are down the drain. 10 lakh crore. Or, and which money is this? Is the taxpayer's money? 10 lakh crore of taxpayer's money has gone as non performing assets. And now, what is the brilliant idea? Because this 10 lakh crore rupees 
or there in the bank's accounts they are showing being shown distressed so banks are not able to get enough credit capital to advance and because their profits are down and then they are not getting the money then that is affecting their bottom line so what are what is the what is the picture they are giving well because we are not able to advance this so country's economy is suffering country's economy because only when banks should advance the money then only the investment would happen if investment happens then only productivity will come then only job growth will come and then gdp will grow our economy will prosper if there are no investment there will be no prosperity at all our economy will suffer so what all these banks are proposing together public sector banks obviously brought it by this and strongly backed by the private sector banks because they know for sure if there is a bailout for the stressed asset for public sector banks automatically our bailout will follow so they are saying we create a bad bank what is a bad bank bad bank concept was created in the 2008 when you know the subprime crisis that happened in america american economy went into a tailspin some of the big banks of america suffered huge losses because of this np non profit stress bad loans bank of america city bank two important banks that time they said we would create because all the bad loans are affecting our bottom line our health of our banking system we will take them away and put them in a separate institution and that institution would take care of the bad bank bad loans separately so that our own original banking system would be clean and would be robust in good health so what happened there the private banks created their own bad bank but because their assets have been greatly diluted because of this crisis <coughs> state federal government of united states of america came to their rescue and advanced billions of dollars for the bailout and because of this bailout the private banks survived otherwise they would have collapsed american government that time gave the justification that we need we needed to support these banks private bank otherwise the average american investor would have suffered because smaller investors have also said kept money there big people will suffer but the smaller investors would also suffer if the bank goes bankrupt so if the bank of and because big people have their own hedges they can they hedge their money in different sets different ways but the poor people the relatively poor the middle class they do not have so much of hedging they put their money in one bank and they would certainly find them completely clueless there is no money in their bank account so in order to support and defend the avares american they said we created this system of course american federal government there said 
that we are giving them this loan, not something which is as a charity. But what happened? How does the Bank of America or Citibank repay American government? They expanded their equity. As you know, every business house has an equity. If they have 100 million equity holders, different people holding, somebody might hold 10 lakhs, somebody might hold 5 lakhs. So they created another several millions of equity and gave that equity ownership to the government of the United States of America. And because they get this, so what happened? Obviously, American, obviously the bank's equity got diluted. The moment you suddenly increase your equity and dilute it, what happens? The value of your stock comes down drastically. So what happened in 2008, before the, the subprime crisis that began, The stock market value of the Bank of America or Citibank was quite high. And because of the dilution of the equity, even after 10 years, it is still much lower, 90% lower than that it was at that point of time. So what has happened? Everyone, the average American has suffered because where is American who has invested in these banks obviously gets a lower return than he or she would have expected from it 10 years ago. And but the banks have had a great time. Remember, even after the subprime crisis. Even after huge bailout by the federal government, the bank salaries, the million dollar salaries did not come down. And the golden handset, the people who resigned, that's, that was, was a classic question. Somebody who resigned from the job gets a, what they call golden handset, a parachute handset, which to the tune somebody got 217 million dollars as the parting shot that I am resigning, I am civilizing my relation, the bank gives them 200. It is at the height of the crisis when the government of America was bailing out billions of dollars to safeguard the average American's money. So, American bankers love their way to the bank. <coughs> They were 100% completely protected. The sufferers were the American citizens and the American government. What is going to happen now in India? What are they saying? As per the current rules, when an asset is declared NPA, non profit asset, the bank, somebody is repeatedly not paying back the EMI. What are the options available for the banks? One option is that whatever collateral they have, that they have, sell it and get whatever money. Look at in the case of Mala, Vijay Malay's 9000 crore the collaterals that he has got, they have, they would not, they have not been able to manage even five crore out of it. And there are organizations which have got forty thousand crore. Apparently, they have absolutely no. You cannot even collect one crore. Look at the crony capitalism. The government. This. Despite such massive losses, refuses to disclose the names of these big defaulters. Even someone like Raduram Rajan defended 
when the Supreme Court some some public spirited individuals, including the Association of Democratic Reforms, the organization which works for transparency, Prashant Bhushan went to the Supreme Court. That at least the names of the people who have borrowed and refused to repay more than 500 crore be made public. So the people should know. Reserve Bank of India, led by Raghuram Rajan, put stiff resistance. All banks together put up a stiff resistance in front of the Supreme Court, saying if names are declared, then India's economic environment will collapse. Nobody will come to invest. Nobody will borrow money. Then India will become a banana republic. That's crony capitalism. That's the government regulating institutions and businessmen are hand in glove. We must protect each other. And how and what has happened? Look at the bank, bankers themselves. All these bankers who have handed out such huge amount of money, but they have not got any collateral, not got any basis for the payment, not found a way how they can get back the money, and still they have advanced the money. And what action can be taken? No, no, no. If we take any action, against a banker, then all banker will become defensive, then nobody will advance any money, and if no money is advanced, then economy would suffer. Then our economy would collapse. So bankers are given protection this way. Businessmen are given protection, their names must not come out in the open. It must remain a safety factor. So ultimately, what do you do when you have 10 lakh crore of your public assets are gone into the dustbin, but at the same time, you would not like to take any action against any industrial house, or any action against any banker, or any action against any government official which has, or who have promoted or facilitated such transactions, what do you do? The idea of a bad bank comes in. What do you do in bad bank? Remove all these assets to another company. Let that company deal with it in its own way. If it is 10 lakh crore, how to get how much money returns out of 10 lakh crore, let it deal. Let us clean up the account of our bank, main banks, and then go ahead with our business. Let the, let the, but what, how do you handle this 10 lakh rupees? You need to create, if you have to create a new bad bank, to handle an amount of 10 lakh crore resources gone astray, you need to put up a huge organization to handle it. You need to create new infrastructure to deal with it. You need to put in such a big IT system to manage it. And you need expert workforce who would have specialization in dealing with the space assets. So to do all this, you need much and again a lot of capital. So if you have to invest 10 lakh crore, if you have to separately manage 10 lakh crore, then possibly you need to spend another 1 lakh crore in order to put this system in order. So another 1 lakh crore, which would be a recurrent expenditure every year. Spend another lakh year to get and what you may ultimately get out of this 10 lakh crore, 
possibly 1,000 crore. I have to get this 1,000 crore, spend an additional 1 lakh crore in India. Great bad bank idea. So what happens by sending it out separately? And that's where RBI, all bank chiefs, the government of India, the finance minister, the chief economic, all are together in the nation's larger interest. Let us create this bad bank so that it gets over once for all. Everyone is protected and happily can go over. Feel another 10, 15 years, 20 years down the line. These banks will again have their stressed assets. When it comes, we will create another separate bad bank and another, again the money will go. Money will be transferred to a certain land. This is the entire idea of a bad bank to protect crony capitalism. This is because this has happened in America, we must do it. America had that resources. Why can't we follow the example of Iceland? Iceland is a small, tiny country. Where in 2008 this crisis happened? But what did the government do there? They put 30 top bank managers in jail. Thirty bank managers were put in jail from one year to five years, depending on the level of crime. They said that would act as the deterrent to this corruption, and in certain cases it is corruption, in certain cases it is negligence. You need to do the due diligence before you are public money. You are sent, you are giving a thousand crore, you just send the check and give it away. One thousand crore, like this. You need to do because they were able to do it, because there is no, there is no action to be taken. Even if that money goes where so what? And anyway, one thousand crore you are giving away. That means you have got an underhand money of fifty crore or hundred crore. So we you are paying away one thousand crore. And that money is also passed on to the bureaucrats, to the politicians, and that's why that's a larger chain. That is what part of the crony capitalism. That money flows down from, from the up down, and that's why everyone is trying to protect everyone else. Politician protecting bureaucrat, bureaucrat protecting industrialist, industrialist protecting banker, everyone protecting each other. That is how the crony capitalism. If we have to have a way out of the crisis. Why can't we follow the Iceland example? Why, why not a dozen top bankers of this country be first sent to jail? The biggest defaulter is state, state Bank of India. Why not Arundhati Bhattacharya, who has been in charge of it for 23 years, been in the highest positions? Why not she be sent to jail? before her idea of bad bank comes. And not alone, see alone. There should be another dozen ba banks which have acted in absolute defiance of common norms and have squandered public money, public money of 10 lakh crore rupees. They should not be allowed to get away with money. First, that should be the public demand. First, send them to jail and then create a bad bank. That would be the ideal solution. Questions? Better. So, this is a very good system. I was my bouncer and he was a little bit Speak a little louder. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. 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 Yes,
सेपरेट बैंक क्योंकि पहले बैंक के अंदर हुआ करता था अब वो सेपरेट बैंक बैड बैंक के थ्रू वो ये करना चाह रहे हैं तो उनके सिस्टम में क्या डिफरेंस होएगा क्यों वैसे ही वो बाउंसर भेजेंगे या क्योंकि जो अगर बाउंसर्स तो विल बी ओनली विद रिगार्ड टू यू एंड मी इफ वी हैव नो बाउंसर वेंट टू बिजनेस हाउसेस नो बाउंसर टचड एनी बिजनेस हाउस दे वर नॉट अलाउड टू गेट पास द गेट of the iron gate of the office no way no one it's only the middle class man or women lower middle class or upper middle class they were the people who were and were officers the top men they got away with more than the men uh, i think shayad sir mujhe exact date yaad nahi hai shayad 2008 ya 9 mein shayad supreme court ne isko mana kiya tha ki banker is tarah kisi ke baat bhi उंसरजेंसी and then uh, the matter went to the even up to the supreme court supreme court made it very very clear to the banks you cannot take law into your hands you have to go through the legal process somebody has defaulted that doesn't mean you will go and uh, catch hold of his his or her color uh, and the road and take away his car that is something that banks that supreme court strongly banned it so that process then gradually got phased out but remember, but remember this incidentally the bank started publishing the names of the small defaulters aapne 40000 rupaya liya hai aapne 1 lakh rupaya liya hai and this type of money kya full full page advertisements they gave about the names of the defaulters and but when it came to the question of giving out the names of the business houses which are taken money no 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 that would affect india's business environment and that is the bank managers are good this and even the rbi governor like uh, uh, rajan also like uh, very stubbornly in the supreme court no 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 business houses names should not be made is look at there are certain situations where certain business houses may genuinely suffer certain situation because of cyclical downturn of economy there are certain new environmental regulations and because of which it might affect what in the same economic environment both private sector banks and public sector banks function why is it that in case of the public sector banks the stressed assets the npas to the tune of 20% whereas in case of private banks it is less than 4% they private banks also advance huge amount of money to big business houses why because they do due diligence they know here is an in business enterprise which is serious which has, which has a business plan which will give returns but and they can always see through some which who is doing a fraud who is just what are what have they done what why is it that so much of money that this black so much of uh, NPA has come because of money they have taken five thousand crore and large part of it three thousand crore four thousand crore rupee they have invested abroad buying properties investing in taxes stressing away in the 
to his banks. So the, the banks should have done the due diligence to see how the 5,000 crore rupee was spent. Because bribe money came, advance another 5,000 crore. Without it. But if because in private banks there is a stronger accountant, not only you will lose your job if you have done this, but you will be prosecuted. Bank, private banks prosecute several of their managers into, and send them to jail. If they have done any kind of it, but in government sector, it does not happen. Because government, my bop is there. So government can absorb all losses, 10 lakh crore, 20 lakh crore, doesn't matter. The taxpayer will pay the money. In private sector, the taxpayer is not going to pay the money. They will have to account for themselves. And that shows how just because of the spawning capitalists, where money exchange stands. In private sector, also when money has been given, there will be some exchange of hand. But this exchange is only in consideration of projects which are viable. But even a viable company has to pay money to get, get the loans from the private sector. But they would not give them money. He present to something which from the very looks of it would have been. See, hundreds of, uh, hundreds of the projects that have now been analyzed by different economists and different chartered accountants. How the very look of it would have shown that this is a fraud that the business house is perpetrating. But the fraud was looked over, overlooked and the government and the banks they started giving away the money. That is because then they have no fear of going to jail. So it's a question is that is, then if you say no, if they're going to jail, then nobody will advance money, then you continue the process this way. Then nobody will take a, any action. And the point is, why can't the private sector banks operate even on the line of the government sector banks operate on the private sector lines where you have a 4% NPA which is still acceptable. Still it's large amount of money, but still it's acceptable. And private sectors claim this poor sec person which is the stressed money out of which as much as 3% is recoverable. We are restructuring it and we know this is a strong viable project and we'll get back money. But Look at the government sector, and you would find 90% of the service, very look of it, you found 90% of the money is just not recoverable. Means 9 lakh crore is just gone out of the out of the thing. Whatever you may do, get the work. So, which may the question of the last thing he the margin will own the area. So, who's trying to उसकी जो कलेक्टर नली प्रॉपर्टी है उसकी हम जो बात कर रहे थे उसमें उसकी प्रॉपर्टी कितने नहीं थे कितने बस तो पेक कर दिया गया मतलब लोन उसको अमाउंट उसको दे दिया गया तो इसमें जो बैंक मैनेजर की अपनी अकाउंटेबिलिटी है तो वहां पे इस पे क्वेश्चन उठा था तो वहां पे क्यों उस बैंक मैनेजर को जिन्होंने भी उनको दिया तो उन्हें क्यों नहीं इसके ईडी ने उन्हें क्यों नहीं इसका रिस्पांसिबल बनाया उसको केस के अंदर उनको डाला वो क्या रीजन है you clear nazar aa raha hai this is this is where you see in the entire apparatus is handing low when the finance ministry when the rbi everyone is giving it by it's, it's not simply the failure of the banks by there is a regulator the rbi what was what were you doing in the last 20 years so much of money is being been advanced without doing any due diligence and what kind of overseeing that you are doing? RBI is such a huge setup. You are supposed to be doing the banking regulation. You should you're supposed to be having a very close look at the bank look at the banking operations. What did you do? You just said whatever the banking banks were doing, you just ignored it and went ahead and saying our system is very good, our banking regulator is very uh, strong and we have a fine banking system and that shows that how this was all a farce that was a meat that was a complete falsehood that was being spread by the government of India to showcase itself that 
our banking system so strong that we will be, we are able to meet any crisis at all. We are not able to meet any crisis at all, five years down the line. Of course, that also because again Rajan insisted please clean up, then the sudden amount of cleaning up began. Otherwise, all these banks were showing huge profits and because of which taking away a huge amount of bonuses <coughs> for, the, for themselves. So that's a question <coughs> he said up. This has been possible because everyone has been together in this. That is because of chronic capitalism. Because of chronic capitalism, this crisis has happened. And this bad bank is an idea which will institutionalize chronic capitalism. Pahle institutional nahi tha, ye sab informal tha. Ya aap mujhe ye karo, main aapko protect honga, aap mujhe protect honga, and we hum is tarah se law karenge. Nobody will be affected. Nobody will go to jail, nobody will have to pay any money, nobody will have to face any consequences. So, that ye informal system tha. Aur if bad bank ke jariye, this will be properly institutionalized. Uh, properly, don't worry at all. There is a bad bank which will take care. You do away, give away lakhs of crores of rupees. The public will suffer, doesn't matter. You are safe. Businessmen, you are safe. Bankers, you are safe. Politicians, you are safe. Your family is safe. Public will suffer. So, ye institutionalization. Thank you. Thanks.